face that's creating a buzz like Noel's to the young India ready to take on the world. Today we're looking at all the excitement and headlines the world of startups are generating. Where else but in a co-working space where it's very possible that India's top entrepreneurs will emerge from eventually. First up, let's take a look at what's happening at the IITs. Why are 1,600 students from the IITs turning entrepreneur every year compared to just over 200 at the IIMs? They want to be job creators and not job seekers, they say. Simitpreet Sembi reports. They're one of India's premier institutions, and the IITs have produced some of India's biggest names. From top boardrooms to politics and government, writers and academics, and of course, tech gurus. The IIT stamp can be found everywhere. And the new horizon for the Indian Institutes of Technology seem to be startups. Being an entrepreneur was always considered to be a risky. Mm -hmm. Slowly, I think that mindset is changing, mm -hmm. and the peer group and the parents are allowing them to take risks. Inspiring many students each year is the success of their seniors and peers. Rohit Bansal, who co-founded Snapdeal, Flipkart founder Sachin and Vinny Bansal and Dipender Goyal, the man behind Zomato, are some of those connected by the years at IIT. The list of IIT graduates setting up or working with startups is only growing. Among them, Akshay, a former Boston Consulting Group employee, he now runs Avanti, an initiative that provides affordable, quality education to children from low-income families, helping them crack competitive exams. Uh, when you study so hard, to get in somewhere. Right? The IITs are very absurdly selective. So you, you tend to believe that you were meant for something bigger, right? This is this, this, this sort of this, you know, I, I don't know if it's a delusion or this, this sort of this, you, you feel like you owe it to yourself and to the world that you do something really big and meaningful. Many, many IITs became entrepreneurs by the time they were in their mid thirties, right? So there used to be this period where we would all go work in the corporate sector, learn something, you know, develop some competence and then you know, get frustrated with not doing something big enough and then go start something new. IIT Mumbai graduates Rohit Shroff and Kovit Kapoor started off with corporate jobs, but soon left them behind after being bitten by the startup bug, even though it came with a new set of challenges. The biggest challenge we face is getting the right kind of people to work with us because uh, a lot of people are still not very receptive to the idea of working in a startup environment because we can't obviously afford to pay, give a very good pay Team building hurdles apart, each year 1,600 IIT students are turning entrepreneurs, compared with 200 odd from the IIMs. And entrepreneurship not just for the money. These youngsters are aiming for something much bigger. You know, the goal for us is, is, is very straightforward, right? There's about, I would say about 10,000, maybe 7,000 good spots at the IITs uh, that kids want. There's about roughly 7,000 tehsils in the country, right? And I think what we want to be able to achieve, you know, if, and this would really end up being my life's work, is ensure that there's one kid going to IIT from every Tehsil. Clearly, India's top technical training campuses are now a hotspot for entrepreneurship. According to a recent study, IITs are among the world's top entrepreneurial undergraduate universities, even ahead of Ivy League institutions such as Princeton, Yale, and Cornell. A sign of how India's brightest minds are embracing entrepreneurship. With camera person Anoop Satsangi, this is Simarfit Kaur for NDTV. So the IIT is clearly nailing that one. Perhaps what aids them is their age, all in their mid-twenties, uh, even early twenties, some of course slightly younger. But if you thought that by the time you hit your late thirties, you're well past your prime to turn entrepreneur, think again. Ankita Sinha caught up with those who have three decades of corporate success behind them. Those who've tasted great professional and financial success, but in their forties and fifties have decided to give it all up, to break the golden handcuff as they call it, and start out. He worked with Ernst & Young for 25 years, focusing on innovation, and that's what finally led him to alter the course of his career. A few years ago, Sunil Chandiramani noticed many of his peers leaving to try their hand at entrepreneurship, and after some thought, decided to take the plunge himself. Tremendous success at work, secure finances and a stable job, while being coveted by most of us, he says, are a golden handcuff. Not easy to give away, but essential to pursue your dreams. Having a top-level job at an established firm may sound like the dream life. However, over a period of time, this often causes professionals to fall into a groove because of which they're not faced with enough challenges that help them grow professionally. That's exactly the reason why Sunil Chandiramani decided to break away from the well-worn path and start up his own firm. 
where I was leading the uh, Global Innovation Task Force for EY globally, where I met numerous different partners. And each one had gone out and done something different. And that really got me thinking for saying, what's holding me back from pursuing my dream? I, I no doubt enjoyed everything that I did, but I had this dream about going out, working closely with entrepreneurs, making a difference, actually taking them IPO, uh, and earning my fortunes uh, uh, through equity share rather than through a salary. And at that stage of point in time, I decided, I said, uh, it's time for me to move on. I've done everything that I could. I've grown it into one of the largest practices in India, in, within the firm itself. And I said, I can do more of this or I can pursue my dream. So that was my tipping point. And I said, I got to go pursue the dream. Sunil took the plunge and Nike Advisory Services was born. The company works with entrepreneurs, hand-holding them when it comes to strategizing their finances, calculating risks and getting their company on track. The move, of course, came with its own set of challenges, but this 46-year-old still feels it was worth it. You've been in an organization that long, you're at the helm, everybody knows you, you've got a full infrastructure going through for you, uh, you're earning a good amount of money, there's consistent cash flow, you don't ever have to think twice about that. And when you start thinking about the other side, uh, clearly you think about the fact that, well, you're going to start from scratch zero. Uh, what's it going to cost you to doing it? Are you really going to make money in the first few years? Are you not going to make money? Will people join you? Will you get clients or not? Uh, and therefore, there's a huge fear factor as well at the other end. From one Sunil to another, Sunil Motilala is one of Asia's top-ranked councils in taxation and transfer pricing and has under his belt 14 years of independent practice, a three-year stunt at PwC and three years at KPNG. But this wasn't enough. He went on to set up law firm Advaita Legal before leaving it in two years to start SML Tax Chamber, clearly bitten by the startup bug. Normally, when you leave a large organization, you, e you either join a competing organization or you start an organization which competes with your earlier organization. Whereas in my case, my earlier organizations may in fact be my clients. I may be a service provider to them. So uh, the, the reason is simple. Once you join, once you start an organization, you get again into the same rut. You have a budgets, you have targets, and things like that. And I wanted to avoid that, really.